This video is going to be all about setting up an indicator. So how to add an indicator to your chart and then getting to the settings of that indicator. Now, obviously we have our built-in indicators here. You have the search bar up here, for example, moving average. And then of course there's the public library. These are custom indicators coded by a global community of traders and investors. You see their usernames here, how many likes, and the name of the indicators, custom coded just for you. But let's get started. So on this chart, we actually have two indicators overlaid on it, MA, moving average. And we're going to remove this second indicator to make this a little more simple. You can see here we have some text and it points down to this historic moment that happened a year ago. We're going to remove that. We're going to make this chart as simple as possible and just focus on the indicator we have, which is the yellow line here. Also, we have an indicator down here as well called rate of change. We'll go th well, we will also go through that. So indicators. Indicators are tools that you overlay on your chart to better understand price. They are used to look for, say, buying opportunities. In this case, it's a moving average. Maybe we want to buy at the moving average. So we're just circling some key moments here. Or maybe they're used as stop losses. Maybe we want to sell if it goes below. You see here, we would have avoided this drawdown. Or if we sold below this, we would have really avoided this drawdown. And this is all up to you. The key is this, the tools are here for you. They're open, they're free. You can hop right onto TradingView and get started. So you've added an indicator to your chart. Here's how you add one, just select from the menu or use the search. And we've added this moving average, that's this yellow line here. And the moving average now, to get to the settings and customize it, we can go up here to this settings wheel and click it. And now we've opened up the settings for this moving average, MA means moving average. You'll find a lot of acronyms like this for indicators. And it just takes skill to get to know them and recognize them. MA, moving average. You'll see some others. Sometimes BB means Bollinger Bands, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in most indicator menus, you're going to have two options, inputs and style. And you'll see here at the bottom, we have a rate of change indicator. And if we click the settings wheel, we have inputs and style. So it's very uh, intuitive. Style is almost always going to refer to the look and feel of the indicator. So ROC, that stands for rate of change. We can customize the color of this rate of change. So watch the color change as we're in the, the style tab. Watch the color change as we just pick various custom colors. It's fast, intuitive, we can build a chart that fits our personal preferences. In this case, let's keep it white and we can leave it there. In style as well, you can even customize generally the how the indicator looks, whether it is a line, a histogram, an area. You can do these crosses here. There are all sorts of options to style your indicator. The key is that you are visualizing something and making decisions based on this information. You're studying the data, you're back testing, you are looking for new insights, and or you're just reviewing new styles of trading or investing. You want it to look good and to fit your style. So we've shown you now how to access the indicator settings, and we've shown you the two distinct options that are available to you, style and inputs. So let's go to inputs because this is really important. This is where a lot of people, when they first use their indicators, don't fully understand what this means. This is inputs. So the first thing you have to understand is indicator time frame. This is how do you want the indicator to be calculated? On what time frame? In markets, there are essentially countless time frames that you can calculate something on. Do you want it to be calculated every minute, every three minutes, every five minutes? You get the idea. You have to pick the time frame of your choice. The default is same as chart. So once again, this is a moving average. See up here in the top left, this yellow line is a moving average. And the default for all indicators is calculated as same as chart. Well, if you look at the top of the chart, you'll see it says one day. 
This means that this indicator is being calculated on a daily time frame. So we go to the settings wheel, we open it, and it says length 50. So this is a moving average with a length of 50, same as chart, daily chart. So it's a 50 day moving average. This indicator specifically is adding up the last 50 days of trading and finding the average price. So 50 day moving average, it's the average price over the last 50 days displayed as a line, in this case, a yellow line. So you have your indicator time frame and your length. Now, what if we changed our time frame to one week? See how quickly the line changed? We'll show you that again. Let's go to one day. So this is a 50 day moving average. If we go to one week, well now it's a 50 week moving average. This means it's average price over the last 50 weeks. So you can start to see now that this is really important in your indicator settings to understand. We're gonna open this up again. You have your time frame, same as chart, which if you change your chart's time frame, say to 30 minutes, it's going to calculate in real time with you. So now we're at a 30 minute chart. And if you recall the length is 50, this is a moving average over the last 50 30 minute increments. So you can see now the indicator time frame is defined by us and by default the same as chart, but you can look at two time frames at once. Now that may have sounded confusing, so please stick with us. Let's go back to a daily chart. So this is a daily chart of the S&P 500 with a 50 day moving average. If we open our indicator settings and now change this to one week, well now we have a daily chart. These are daily candles of the S&P 500 and a weekly moving average. Remember, we change this to weekly. It says indicator time frame one week. We're actually looking at two time frames at once. This is a form of multi time frame analysis. You're looking at two time frames at once. It all starts from your settings. That is so key. Let's change this to same as chart. Next up in inputs is you'll find this, which is source, close. And when you click this, you actually have multiple options and understanding these will be really, really helpful because you can set your source to calculate based on the open, the high, the low, the close, and several other options, and it's entirely defined by you. For example, you could set it based off of a rate of change. Now, the most common and default style is close. So in this instance, it's a 50-day moving average using the closing prices of each day. If we change this to high, you saw it change a little there, it's because now it's a 50 day moving average, daily chart, using the high point of each session. So it's actually what is the moving average based on the last 50 days, starting from the highs of each of those 50 days. Now this might sound complex. I think some of you are probably staying with us. The key is to get in here and try it for yourself. That is how you will really be able to get started with this. So remember, you can add indicators to your chart using the indicators button at the top. You can select all of these indicators. They're open and available to you. There's the public library. But what you really have to understand, and this is where it gets advanced, and this is where you can really begin to understand markets, find new strategies, entries, exits, or just expand your style, is click the settings wheel to make custom changes to the indicator to control the way it's calculated and visualized. Inputs, remember, inputs refers to the exact numbers that go into the calculation of the indicator. Style refers to how the indicator looks and feels, the style of it, the color, the size of the line, for example, or the opacity, how visual do you want it to be on the chart, very light or at its max boldness. Also, the way it looks, so as you can see here, we can actually even change this 50 uh, day moving average into an area chart of its own. Totally up to you. And that's part of the mission. You have the tools to create a process that fits your needs perfectly. Now you may also find that some indicators are shown at the bottom of your chart, like this rate of change indicator. 
it's similar to what we just showed you with the 50 day moving average indicator which is overlaid on your chart you have a style and inputs and you have the control over all of these and this is an interesting example here because rate of change this indicator ROC shows us the daily rate of change so we can actually see that wow on this day the S&P 500 was down 0.9 percent we can circle this whole area and see that on this day see this candle right here the S&P 500 was down a lot it was one of its worst down days in quite some time and that is how you can really start to dive in to make these indicators show you the information that you need to see to make better decisions last point here that's really important if you click the settings wheel you'll notice we have a length of one well that's because we just want to see the rate of change over one day because our indicator time frame is same as chart one day so this is just one day what was the rate of change on this day the rate of change on this day the rate of change on that day there's no uh, average average or cumulative effect it's just day by day by day so you can do things like that where you have a length of one sometimes understanding how to control the inputs and the style will make you a better chartist trader investor and just someone with more knowledge about markets and how to ultimately process and visualize data so we hope that you enjoyed this video we hope it helps you get started in the comments below please let us know another chart or indicator or lesson that you'd like to learn about and in upcoming videos we're actually going to make videos that go through each of these tools so you can better use them thank you for watching